What's up, Algebra 1 students? Mr. Ford here with another homework tutorial. This time we're looking at 3.2.3, problems 58 through 63. Let's go for it. Um, just like today and yesterday, we're going to be examining the rectangles with the tiles below. We're going to write the area as a product of the length and width and a sum of its parts. So, very similar to what we did today and the last couple days. Uh, the product in this case is going to be x plus 1 along the bottom side and x plus 3 on the top side. x plus 1, x plus 3. Don't forget both of those parts. As far as the sum goes, I see an x squared tile there. I see 1, 2, 3, 4 x tiles and 3 unit tiles. And that would be it uh, for this one over here. Very similar. Again, just kind of practicing problems. You have x plus 2 along this side, 2x plus 1 along this side. So that would be x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. And it does not matter what order those go in. For the sum, you have 2x squareds, 5x's, and 2 tiles. 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. You can count those tiles up if you like. Okay, 359 is setting the stage for where we're going to go next week on Monday when we get back from the weekend. 359, we're going to find the total area of each rectangle below. Each number inside represents the area. Let's keep on oh, no, Each number inside represents the area of that smaller rectangle, while each number along the side represents the length of that portion of the side. So we'll be multiplying 11 times 4 to get 44 in this box. You know, what's interesting here is that we don't know um, 11 times what number or or whatever to get into this box there. That's going to be kind of the trick of this problem. So we're going to have to kind of work backwards for this. Um, a good way to do that is to fill in the other sides that are in this problem. So what else is going to go along here? I mean, this is also 4 because that's 4 down there. But um, if we think about this box here, uh, 4 times what number gives you 12? And that means that this side's got to be 3 right there because 4 times 3 is 12. Uh, now you got to think, okay, what number up here times 3 gives you 39? For that, I wouldn't judge you if you used a calculator for it, but 39 divided by 3 is going to give you 13, like that. 3 times 13 gives you 39. And now down here in the final box, you can figure out what 13 times 11 is. Again, I don't know that off the top of my head. 13 times 11, it's going to be 1. Oh, jeez. Can't even use a calculator today. It's going to be 143. Right there. Beautiful. Question B is going to be very similar. Again, we kind of got to work backwards on a few things. Um, again, we got to kind of start. We don't really have anything we can fill in yet. Um, we can fill in the sides, though, here and here, uh, because I know that 8 times 5 is 40. I also know that 6 times 3 is 18, and so that'll be 3 over here also. And You know, you can fill in all the sides if you like to, since they're kind of the same across the rectangle. So 6 times 5 is going to be, in this box, 6 times 5 is going to be 30. And 3 times 8 is going to be 24 up there in that box. And um, actually, I kind of misread the challenge of this problem. Our challenge is to find the total area of each rectangle below. So now that we know these numbers, we got to add them all together. 12 plus 39 plus 44 plus 143 is going to equal something. I don't know what it is. But it's going to be something. 238, and uh, there you go. Over here, uh, 24 plus 18 plus 40 plus 30. Again, I'm just doing that on my calculator. Calculator cam is very small right now, but uh, total is going to be 112 for the total. That is 24 plus 18 plus 40 plus 30. And there you go. Okay, um, 360 is asking us to practice a problem that we did kind of together as a review in class today, but this is a process that you saw on yesterday's homework, and it's, again, setting the stage for another kind of problem coming your way. Here you got to think backwards. We're going to start by, we are doing x divided by 8, so we're going to start by multiplying by 8 to solve this problem. What I want you to see as Algebra 1 students is the 8 divided by 8 is going to cancel out, leaving you with the x. And as far as solving 3 fourths times 8 goes, you kind of have two choices. Um, you could do 3 times 8 and then divide it by 4. In other words, do 24 
divided by four and get six. Or what I prefer is you do eight divided by four and multiply it by three. That would be three times uh, two, which is also six. Doesn't matter how you get there. They don't ask how, they just ask how many. So it's up to you which way you wanna go. We're gonna have to do that for each one of these problems. So I'm gonna put the gas on and just go for it and stop being so explainy. Over here, we're gonna multiply by 40 on both sides. These guys are gonna cancel out. We're gonna have 40 times 2 fifths equals x. 40 divided by five is gonna be eight. Eight times two is equal to 16. Again, notice how much work I'm showing for this problem. I want you to see all the mechanics there. You can pause this or rewatch that if it's too fast. Question C, um, I would start by multiplying by 12 on both sides. That's the first step. The 12 cancels out. You get x equals 12 over 8, which um, you're not going to get a nice answer for if you try on a calculator. You're going to get 1.5, which is fine. I kind of prefer 3 over 2, which is the uh, reduced form of this fraction here. And finally, over here on question D, let's start by multiplying by 10 on both sides. These will cancel out. You'll have x is equal to 12 over 15 times 10. Here they do not uh, work out to be um, 10 divided by 15 is not a nice number. So I actually would prefer to do 120 divided by 15. I'm going to multiply 12 times 10 over 120. The thing about math is that you got to kind of be ready for kind of anything because if you understand the, pros the properties, you'll be okay. 120 divided by 15 is actually equal to 8. So there you go. Let's go to the next page. Oh, my thing just, whenever I zoom in and zoom out too much, it, it tends to fight back on me a little bit. So here we go. Okay. Question 361, Mailbox Plus sends packages overnight for $5 plus 0.25 per ounce. When you see the phrase per ounce, that's got to jump out at you as the slope of this problem. And that would mean that B is going to be the 5. That's how it's going to start. Uh, we also know that uh, United Packages charges $2 plus 0.35 per ounce. Mr. Molinari noticed that his package would weigh the same to mail using either service. So how much does his package weigh? That sa the same means we're going to be putting an equal sign down and we're going to put expressions on both sides. Um, the mailbox's plus is going to be 5 plus 0.25x. That's going to be the... Uh, the first cost. The other company, United Packages, is going to be kind of the same idea. It's two dollars plus 0.35x. So two plus 0.35x. And that's in green highlighted right there. Now we're going to solve this like a standard algebra problem. So at this point I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to let it go, and we're just going to work through this. I would start by subtracting 0.25x from both sides. No matter how different this problem looks, uh, keep your head screwed on straight. It's the same basic principle as all our basic algebra solving problems. I am going to write that as 0.10x because it's a money problem. So 0.10 means 10 cents. Uh, from here, I'm going to subtract the 2 from both sides to gather the numbers. 3 equals 0.10x on both sides. And now I will divide by 0.10. And what you should remember, my calculator friends, is that when you divide by a decimal, it actually makes the number bigger uh, because it takes, uh, you can fit multiple point tens inside of one one. So three divided by, oops, three divided by point, point ten. It's going to give us 30 for the answer. So his package weighs 30 pounds, which I've never understand why we abbreviate as LBS, but hey, what are you going to do? Question 362 is reviewing your algebra one days. What is the equation of the line that has a y-intercept at 0, negative 3 and passes through the point negative 9, negative 9? Well, they told us that the y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 3. So that's going to be your b in this equation. Highlighter, please, is what I need. Yeesh. So b is going to equal negative 3. We kind of know that. So our equation right now, if you want to think about mx plus b, our equation looks kind of like that. Um, it's also got to go through the point negative 9, negative 9. So um, what you could do is you could find the slope using the slope formula. Um, you would just need to remember to subtract your y's, which would be like negative 9 and negative 3. And then since I did negative 9 and negative 3, I got to do negative 9 and 0. Negative 9 plus 3 
on top is going to be equal to negative 6. And negative 9 minus 0 on bottom is just going to be negative 9. That's going to equal a positive 6 over 9. We can reduce it to 2 thirds, I think is the best answer there. So our equation is going to be y equals 2 thirds x plus negative 3. That is the best way to make that happen. And finally, we got some rational expressions. I know this video is already at 10.5 minutes, but these are going to take some time also. So this one might be a little bit longer. This is a checkpoint quiz coming up um, after the semester break. So we got to be ready for this kind of stuff, working with fractions. It's not too terrible, but you do have to remember some basic ideas. Um, the first one is to, to add these two mixed numbers together. The best way is to convert them into improper fractions. So 6 times 7 is 42, and 42 plus 5 is 47. So this is negative 47 over 6. Um, same thing, 4 times 7 is 28. 28 plus 1 is 29. This is negative 29 over 4. The next thing I would do is you need to get the denominators to be the same so you can compare the same quantities. So I would multiply the fraction on the left by, let's see, 6 and 4 both match up at 12. So 3 over 3 and 2 over 2 over here. This is by no means an easy problem. I just want you to know that. Uh, 2 times 47 is going to be negative 94. Yep, over 12 plus Negative, oh God, 29 times 3 is 87. 87 over 12. And holy Jesus, 94 plus negative 87. Man, do we want people to hate math class or what? I don't like problems like this because I feel like they're struggling. They're a struggle for the wrong reason. They're doable, but I don't know. I feel like you could make this a little more presentable. But hey, there's what it is. Question B is going to be, this is the kind of question I think I would prefer. I think this will be a little simpler to work with. 2 times 8 is 16, 16 plus 1 is 17 over 2, minus, uh, in the parentheses, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 plus 1 is 13, negative 13 over 4. We'll change that to a plus in the next step. We should also convert this fraction, let's multiply everything by 2 over here, to make its denominator also 4. We'll have negative 34 over 4 plus 13 over 4, changing that minus negative into a plus right there. And all we got to do now is add negative 34 plus 13. I'm going to use a calculator, but don't judge me. Negative 21 over 4 is a better answer. I like this question better than the previous question. Question C. Ah, here we go. Multiplication. Much easier, I think. We should first convert this mixed number into a, a, a improper fraction, though. 7 times 2 is 14, and 14 times plus 3 is 17 over 7. We're going to multiply that all times negative 7. Now, what I want you to notice, a couple things. Negative times negative is going to give us a positive answer. And also, 7 divided by 7 is going to cancel out and become 1. So the answer here is positive 17. That's all there is to it. Question D, um, well, we've got division here, one last thing to deal with. So 8 times 2 is 16. 16 plus 1 is 17, so negative 17 over 8. Now, when it comes to dividing fractions, there are a lot of reasons why this trick works, but let's just do the trick. We're going to change the division into multiplication, and we're going to flip 1 over 5 into 5 over 1. We call this keep, change, flip. You keep the first number, you change division to multiplication, and you flip 1 fifth to 5 over 1. 17 times 5 is going to be 85. It's negative 85 over 8. I don't believe that reduces at all, so... There you go. This one went kind of long. Those fraction problems are going to be showing up quite a bit in the next few times, and we will practice them a lot when we get back from the semester break because you have a checkpoint quiz over that uh, pretty shortly here. So, all right. Hope you enjoyed this video. You're awesome for being here. Um, I'll see you in the next one.